Hey guys, what's going on? I have an amazing guest today for us. So this is Uzair. Uzair is a Google Ads genius. He runs an agency and as well is an expert trainer when it comes to Google Ads. So anything to do with Google Ads, including search, display, video. And he's also part of my YouTube ads training program. And he's uh, he's been one of the most involved people and it's been pretty awesome to see his results and how he's been scaling him up. I even get advice from him sometimes as to uh, ideas and so on. So Uzair, welcome. And yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Hi, Sash. Thank you so much for having me and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Uzair Karawala from SF Digital Studios based in the UK. Uh, the business has been going on since 2002. We are a full-scale digital marketing agency. My background, we started the business. In fact, my wife started the business as a photography business. And my background has been photography. So when the internet started evolving, video came along on uh, DSLR cameras as well as on the smartphones. I knew back then in 2010, 2011, that video is the future. And I started dabbling with it on an ad hoc basis. But video marketing, I started seriously about 2018, 2019, where we are uploading uh, videos on a, a regular basis for organic um, rankings in YouTube as well as in um, Google. But with my background, of photography, the video creation, which is the key part of having, you know, running any campaigns come, is coming in very handy. So we run campaigns for search, display, uh, we do a fair bit of video for ourselves and also for our, for our clients as well. So yeah, that's what we do. Cool. So one of the cool things that you really focus in on is Google Ads Editor. So it's kind of a tool that nobody really knows how to use. We use it at our agency all the time. We cover it in our training, but it's something that you've gone super deep on. And 99% of media buyers out there basically don't even know what it is. So what is Google Ads Editor and why does it help uh, you with kind of running Google Ads, whether it be search, display, or video? Well, that's the 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 unfair or the fair advantage we have as an agency, uh, you know, somebody like you as well, compared to those who don't know what it is, because there's no way in the world they can compete with us. It's like in a race, we having a Ferrari or a Lamborghini compared to somebody having a Ford. The things which you can do with regards to the workflow with editor, um, there is not, it's impossible, uh, especially when it comes to testing and a lot of testing. And Sasha, I've um, shown you the kind of testings which we do. So we set up literally dozens and dozens or hundreds of campaigns at a time, thousands of ad groups, potentially thousands of ads, and then upload it in one go uh, through the editor and set it up in there as well. So the workflow is first of all, lightning fast, uh, it gives you very uh, granular campaign setup where you can separate out lots of different things. You can target different things, stop, start, change things around in bulk. And the best thing is um, editor is a free Google ads tool as well as um, it works on both Mac and PC and it's an offline tool. So if you are working on a big, campaign or an account you don't need to keep saving it as you go along you can do 20 percent of the work go away come back to the computer or the laptop tomorrow or the day after and carry on from where you left so that's why it's without that tool we we'll pretty much would not be able to produce the results which we do for our clients Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, the best thing I love about Google Ads Editor is just how fast you can make changes. So for example, if you wanted to, let's say, exclude something, right? Like let's say exclude 18 to 24 from like a few hundred campaigns, the Google Ads Editor, that's very fast. While if you go inside Google Ads and do that, it might it'll be a little slow. Google Ads might get stuck a little bit. Uh, so in general, 
I highly recommend learning about Google Ads Editor, and that's kind of uh, what your your kind of your expertise in. Um, so I'm curious, could you show us perhaps a little bit of how how you use Google Ads Editor? I think that could be a really cool, interesting use case for the, the audience yeah. there. Yeah. I mean. Okay. So the first thing is the editor to work in editor you need to set up the campaign in a spreadsheet be it excel or a google sheets i prefer google sheets because then i can uh, be on any device or computer at home or in the office and have access to all my files i'm going to show you a very quick way of how to set up a google display network now display network as you very well know sash it's mm -hmm. what i call it the not the google display network but the the golden display network because there literally is gold out there uh, on the display chat network most people 99 percent don't know how to use it because they will just set up a targeting which is too broad and the budget is going to be eaten up very quickly so what you want to do is to test lots of things and throw a lot of things on the wall and see what sticks and what doesn't stick so as you can see over here we've got about 1600 odd uh, ad groups over here so you can either make 1600 campaigns separately if you are very keen or you can have one campaign and have all these separate ad groups the difficulty or the difficult part is to make an ad group which is separate from the other ones obviously you can't have the same name or the naming um, structure of the uh, at different ad groups you can only have one unique name per ad group so how do we do that? And on bulk, you don't want to be sitting here writing all these um, names of ad groups. So the way we're doing this one is I'm overlapping two audiences. One is, well, one audience and one keyword. So I'm targeting the, let's say we've got a, a, a cosmetic or a skincare product, right? So the affinity audience I'm targeting is fashionistas. And the keyword is all these keywords, which we then download from your keyword planner, bring it over here. And I paste it in column C, as you can see, I've got 1600 odd keywords, only one different. Now you can have different audiences. There are lots of different one people who go to beauty salons or beauty mavens and all sorts of key, um, targeting. You can have different uh, keywords. So what we are doing is trying to narrow down um, our uh, targeting for this. So the way we do this is I've got my keywords in one column. Then I've got my audience in my other column. And column D is used so that we can copy it uh, in here. So if I highlight, and I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see this formula properly. And that is the key to everything. That's a mm -hmm. simple formula, which will, what is going to look at is we've typed in affinity equals to D2. So D2 is that fashionistas over here. Then we put in a space over there and K equals to C2, which is what. Got it. So, so basically what you did is, so you have the affinity, it's one affinity, but you basically put in a huge list of keywords and then with that formula, you can have that. And now you, you essentially have, with Google Display yeah. Network, from what I understand, one of the key is, uh, key things about Google Display Network is you really want to do a lot of layering. That's right. right. And you can do the same thing on YouTube as well. So instead of Got a display it. ad, you put a YouTube ad. Obviously, you need to have the YouTube campaign, video campaign. But it, the structure is the same. So Got you could it. have so, 16, you can have six, 160, you can have 1600, or you can have 16,000. Wow. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. And it takes really literally cool. seconds. It, it literally takes seconds. Now, my campaign structure is pretty much done. All we do then is, I'm going to just copy all of it, even though I don't need this one, I'll just copy that. Copy this and go to my editor. This is where the magic happens. Um, I can go to ad campaign in fact what i could do i can do one okay so all i do is now i make multiple changes based from clipboard and 
uh, what I need to do is take take a step back. I copy. This is important. You copy mm -hmm. the campaign name, um, create a new campaign, and then paste it. I'll just put the budget over here as one. Uh, and now I'm going to call this as a, a display. Now you can make a search or you can make video shopping, whatever you want to do. All the options are available, what you get in the interface. So you mm -hmm. put in the budget, the bidding type, campaign type, you know, include search partners and all the usual stuff which you would do. And the good thing about editor is it's it's in um, in an order. So you start from the top and you keep going down. You won't miss anything. You can change it over here, target the locations and all of these things which you do, which we don't need right now for here. Okay, then I've got my campaign empty shell started. Uh, okay, it says here campaign has got another name because I keep using it as a test campaign. So I'm going to, now this is uh, 21 May. Let's do that. How quick and easy it is to change things around. I would mm -hmm. need to change everything in here as well. I'll delete all of that. Okay, now it's done. I'll copy this. And then I make my ad groups. Make multiple changes. My campaign data, uh, data includes my columns. And now we are copying all these ad groups over here. So it should include 1660, which is correct. Mm -hmm. Done. I'm happy with that. I keep it. Keywords, I go to my keyword targeting. I create multiple. My data includes paste. Now each keyword is going to go in each ad group. So we've got one keyword per ad group and not mm -hmm. 1600 keywords per ad got group. Got it. So you can just import it and then in, when you import it on the ad group level, it's gonna import just the yeah. ad group and if then I go, on the keyword level, yeah. Yeah, so if I go, see now this is why the way I set up the naming convention is just by mm -hmm. looking at this, I know my keyword is 10 millimeter lashes. My keyword mm -hmm. over here, I'm in there, is got only one and you can see it only one. If there's any problems, I can straight away just by flicking through it and they will all be the same. There's, wow. It never makes any mistakes or it never misses out on any keywords or anything. Even when we are putting up 1600, all of these 1600 odd ad groups and keywords will be the same best magnetic lashes, best magnetic lashes 2020. So I've done my keywords. Now this is impossible as you know, Sash, to do, I mean 16 or 60 to do, it will take you ages and people won't do it. Then- uh, I got a question. Is there a way to, um, so let's say if you wanted to do this on the campaign level, so you would, you would be able to do this just by kind of like, yeah. let's say in the spreadsheet, right? If you have each of yeah. these campaigns has a different name, you just import it in uh, just on a campaign level and it will create hundreds of campaigns. So I can copy this and paste it there. Yeah, and now if for the people who prefer in campaign level, there you go. You, you have, go. you can now uh, basically, yeah. yeah. Right. If you wanna do it on the campaign level, uh, let's say if you're doing YouTube ads, we like to have mostly things on a campaign level versus the ad group level. So that's that's really useful. Can I show you something really cool, which I've done, I'm quite- Yeah, for sure. So what we do is we, I'm running some ads for myself. So I'm targeting mm -hmm. these messages, become an expert on Google ads fed up with hiring agencies, you know, not getting any of the results, get unlimited leads, mentor, workflow. So I've got five angles and I've got four, four different ads where I have shot each one four different ways in front of a computer against a green wall, gray wall, white wall. So I've got mm -hmm. 20 ads, right? Five times mm -hmm. four. Yeah. And now I've got all these different targeting or keywords. Now these are audiences, pre-built audiences in Google ads. Mm -hmm. I've got 30 of them. So going back to your question about at campaign level, I've got one, 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 one campaign, mm -hmm. uh, one angle, one ad, and one targeting. So now, as soon as I enter them over here, this gets pre-built. So if I 
put in, let's say, um, it auto auto updates over here in mm. the campaign. If I put in add one, mm -hmm. so my campaign naming structure is I straight away I can see it. Okay, this is my offer. This is my angle. This is my ad name. This is my targeting. Mm -hmm. This is then we have devices. We, so we break it down for for a device level as well. Mobile we keep separate, tablet we keep separate, and computer we keep separate. Mm -hmm. So we don't put all three devices in one. So we can then put in over here if I want to put in computer. All my naming the campaign name becomes you know instantly I can change this to anything on the fly. Then, like today, I have set up these five campaigns. So over here, I've got 600 because each one, one times four ads mm -hmm. times 30, 120 campaigns for become an expert, 120 for fed up with agencies. So five times 120 is 600. All of these are done in a blink of an eye. That's amazing. So you basically just copy and paste them into Google ads editor and That's then right. you can just, right. yeah, just launch like five. And if those five don't work, you got the next five ready to go. That's right. But I, we, what we do is usually we pick five from here, five from here. So we'll pick out different, um, mm. different, um, backgrounds, different ads, so green wall, background. white wall, whatever. And then if they don't work, mm -hmm. uh, if these two are not working, I'll stop these. And then we say, okay, these ones we are starting today. So if I put in 21st May, mm -hmm. the date also gets auto entered in the campaign name. So we can straight away look at it because sometimes then you have to go into the campaign settings and all that and waste time. It's straight away, you know how long this has been running. Right? Yeah, that's, that's very powerful because then yeah. They basically have like a really good system to just manage your campaigns and yeah. kind of run them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So going back over here, uh, I'm just gonna uh, go back. Okay, uh, so we've done the ad groups mm -hmm. and now we need the audience. So you don't need to copy all of this because it's only one. All we do is we go at the campaign level, go to my audience, add audience, uh, campaign level, find fashion, Nistas. Fashionistas, uh, yeah, the quick little fast search thing that just searches everything in yeah, the uh, audiences and just, yeah. Oh, beautiful. sorry, I made a mistake because you can't um, put them at uh, campaign level. So I made a mistake. It gave me a little error warning yeah. sign so the red error is a major issue right. yellow error is usually like a recommendation yeah uh, I select all of these and now you will find 1600 mm -hmm. if I I can select all of them or I can look over here 1660 because that number should match my Ad groups. Ad group level, level. And then keywords right. should also match. So 1660. Yeah, exactly. Keywords, 16, 1660. That's right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if I go at campaign level, uh, keywords 1660, ad group 1660, audiences 1660, or anything else if you want to add. Uh, if, I want, if you want to layer another, another targeting on here, you can add another lot and make it even more tighter if you want. So it really doesn't matter how many options. I, I would recommend no more than two. Then you don't get much traffic to, to your uh, ads. But now I'm pretty much, the only thing red, uh, left to do is ads. Mm -hmm. So if I go to my ads and I'm saying, okay, I want to set up other image ads or I'm gonna put in, where's my responsive display ads? So I go over here, I've selected all the ad groups, add responsive display, select all of them, or you can select whichever ones you want to do, but we want to put this ad in all the ad groups. Okay, long and dry. So this is my long headline. 
add line one. Uh, yep. And then once you create one ad, or like basically let's say you, you created the ads and you applied them to this whole ad groups, all the 1600 ad groups, um, then what you can also do is, you know, if you create another campaign, it's really easy to just copy and paste ads. Yeah. Yeah. And all you would do then is, uh, I'm just going to put in a image over here or whatever image you want. To, you can put in multiple images as well so that Google can test it. Right. Um, final URL. And that's my ad. Then you can have your call to action over here, learn more. You can put in the your branding of your main colors, accent colors, and show uh, and so on. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'll keep it all formats. But you can put up multiple headlines, you know. Mm -hmm. And Google will mix and match headline to headline three and so on. Um, yeah, that's a cool thing. Yeah, with the Google Display Network, uh, even yeah. the search ads so on, like it's that's pretty right. easy to do that. Yeah, uh, let me show you. Oh, yeah, I have taken a screenshot. What happens is now you throw in a bunch of headlines up to 10 and four description lines, mm -hmm. few images, and Google is then going to use headline one with description one with image one. Sometimes it will do headline one, description two, image two. It's going to keep on rotating the testing and work out which is the best performing ad. Now, mm. this is a screenshot. When I go to CNN, mm -hmm. I see three ads. One is a 300 by 250. This mm -hmm. is 970 by 250. And this is the same size as that. So what mm -hmm. it is doing now, sometimes I see multiple image uh, ads of my own, but with different photo. But right now it's testing the, all of them the same one, because this is a better performing ad, which is likely to get the conversion or whatever the call to action I'm focusing on. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to be a graphic designer to make all these different sizes and everything. All you do is, write your headlines just like you would as a search campaign, the description and images and your logo. And your, I mean, it's giving me that the dimensions are violating their policies because it's not the right dimension, but you get the gist. Yeah, now I've exactly. Got, I've got my, um, in fact, uh, oh, where is it gone? <laughs> um, I hadn't selected all of them. So let's say if I select one, I'm just going to put something to, so let's say I made a mistake of something, right? And this is how easy it is to rectify test.com. Okay, so I've done, I'm working away and then I'm thinking, oh shoot, I not select all the other ones. So what I could do is, first of all, I go here, I copy, that add, I'm just going to select all of the ad groups except this one. And then I'm, oh no, it has done it, sorry. It had done it. In fact, I did a mistake. And basically, if you select them all, you can just, you know, you can just do bulk changes I can for any, any one thing. Yeah, I've deleted all of them. And now I can paste them in one go. Ah, yeah, so exactly. You can, so you can do bulk changes very quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. And now you don't need to worry about it. I mean, I haven't pasted, why isn't it pasted? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, because it has not copied. I didn't copy. It didn't. The ad didn't got copied over here properly. That's why. And I have deleted that. Okay. No problem. I'll make a new one. And test.com. 
I'll make to add an image. All right, so let's say I've got my ad written. I'll copy it, and if I want to paste in. And just those ones, then you can just do those ones. Just all, or I can select it from here. Mm -hmm. And now they've all, all been done. Or yeah. I can select, if I want to, if I made a mistake again, I can go back from here, undo the last action. I can select over there. And now I can select all of these, which are 1660. And it has now uploaded that ad to all the 1660 ad groups. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much done with this campaign. So I should see one campaign, 1660 ad groups, keywords, one location, looks pretty good to me. And I think I may have made a mistake with this responsive over here because not a mistake, these are the ads, responsive mm -hmm. display ads, but it is telling me. Yeah, because you don't. Uh... Because it's, I haven't set it up properly with the yeah. images and stuff. So yeah. the good thing about this is it's not going to let you upload anything which is not as per Google's policies mm -hmm. or guidelines. So if you are running a search campaign and you've got a search expanded text ads, instead of 30 characters in the description, you've got 31, it won't let you upload. Mm, exactly. Anytime you yeah. get something red, you can't upload anything. Yeah, and I mean, this is such a powerful tool, guys. So. Yeah. Um, like these are some of the uses you can use, but there's just like so many other uses as well. Um, and this has been like, basically when a media bar comes into our agency, the first thing we teach them is Google ads editor. And that's literally what like our team uses for like, we very rarely use Google ads. I'll, I'll use Google ads if I'm running a simple, like small campaign where I don't need to do too many things. But if, when we're running campaigns or spending $5,000, $10,000 or $20,000 a day, um, we barely use the web interface where we're inside Google ads editor because it's so much more efficient when you're dealing with large spends, large number of campaigns, large number of variables. So it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. Now, what I am curious about as well is, you know, obviously setting up this display campaign um, and, you know, you're kind of like, you have a very unique approach to display that most people don't really kind of know about and you, you make display work. So what, what kind of, what would be your kind of, top few uh, tips for making Google Display Network work? Because it's such a massive network, there's so much traffic in there. Um, what, what are kind of some of the keys to making that work? Okay, so it's exactly the same way you would do your video ads. You have your metrics mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. target CPAs or the target ROAS or whatever. And if a ad group or an ad is not performing, not converting, it's expensive, because we've got so many options over here. Mm -hmm. I've got 1,660 ad groups. If this one is not performing, I can, in fact, if let's say this lot is not performing, I can go here, select 36 ad groups, and pause. Pause upload. it, exactly. Job done. Mm -hmm. So you can do things like this very quickly. And just like you would, um, optimize your video campaigns instead of having a video ad you're having an image ad mm -hmm. the rest of it is pretty much the same got it uh, would you say that there's sort like for example layering is one thing that you use very heavily in Google Display Network that in in for us when we run video ad campaigns layering typically mm -hmm. doesn't work super well for uh, for us when we've run experiments on the YouTube side, but on the display side, it seems like layering is extremely okay. powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, before we move on, I wanted to talk about something very special very quickly. If you are interested in running or are already running YouTube ads, this is for you. I wanted to introduce you to a few people that are killing it with YouTube ads. Mike made over a million and a half dollars with e-commerce YouTube ads. Bastian did over $300,000 for a client at a 10X ROAS. Boyd's making five grand a day with his course. Kale made a client $40,000 from just $8,000 in ad spend. 
Lloyd made a client $33,000 from $12,000 in ad spend. Do you know what the one thing they have in common? They're all part of my expert YouTube ads training program. We have the most technical YouTube ads course in the market with live weekly calls, a Facebook group where you can ask any question you want about YouTube ads and more. And some of the best students spending thousands or even $10,000 a day on YouTube advertising. So there's a link below in the description to go book a demo call. Go and book a call to get a preview of the course and see if it's a fit for you and if it can help you get your YouTube ads to $5,000 a day or more. Now let's get back to the rest of this video. And and other thing which you can do over here is you must have come across those mobile apps where your mm -hmm. budget gets blown up within seconds of mm -hmm. running starting an ad because yeah. on youtube if you are running in stream ad obviously it's not going to youtube it's not going mm -hmm. on other places but on google display network there is no way in the interface where you can exclude the mobile apps except mm -hmm. in the editor. Mm -hmm. And this is where you go mobile apps, categories, negatives. I can select the whole campaign or campaigns, campaign level. And then just exclude all apps. Bam, there you all go. Apps. Super simple. This tip is going to save you thousands and thousands. So if you've stayed until at this point of this video, <laughs> congratulations, you've saved yourself a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's, that's such a key, key point. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I am curious, right? Uh, we kind of covered a little bit of Google Ads Editor and kind of how to, how to use it uh, I love your spreadsheet system. I think it's pretty amazing how you've got that set up inside Google Sheets. So you can basically be able to just go into editor and just have a very fast workflow, just copy and paste basically. That's all you need to do to launch a thousand campaigns that are all unique. So, and then we also covered a little bit of Google Display Network. Um, so I had a couple more questions. Number one is with Google Display Network, are you having success with, uh, with, Kind of your training program with that or are you what kind of niches are working basically is kind of my question so i can target anybody on display network mm -hmm. with remarketing so Got what it. Yeah, we do that's for powerful. ourselves and we yeah. run for our clients as well mm -hmm. is to the brand building i just showed you my ads popping up on cnn mm -hmm they pop up on wall street journal uh, ny times huffington post espn all these high, very high quality prestigious portals and websites mm -hmm. when my clients see my ads on these platforms they don't know how these have been set up they think i'm advertising on cnn mm -hmm. so all of a sudden my my brand value goes from here to up there yeah and that is like, oh, what, you're on CNN. <laughs> yeah, I saw you on CNN. And people think, oh, you know, wow, they're on all these websites. So I keep telling a lot of my clients and my students as well. For me, mm -hmm. when a customer or a potential new lead, and when they contact me and they tell me, oh, I see your ads everywhere. Wherever I go, I see your ads. For me, that is that conversion, which is not attributed in Google Ads, but conversion happens here because once it happens over here, whenever they want to get started with Google Ads, the first name I want to come is my name in the head, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. anybody else's. So this is a long-term game plan, which I usually, uh, play for myself and for my clients is do, don't do the 100 meters dash go for the marathon build it up gradually because if they don't click my ad on cnn on all these places it's free branding mm -hmm. just like youtube five seconds they've at least they've viewed until 15 seconds um, it's, it's free branding so there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing this and you know we've just shown you what's the you know, the potential of it is unbelievable potential and you build it up, you build it up, you 
target those people who have viewed your videos on YouTube, mm-hmm. on GDN, and vice versa, and all sorts of you know remarketing. And um, actually, you got to have multiple touch points before they are going to convert. Anyway. Absolutely. By the way, do you want to stop sharing your screen so we can yeah. have the full video yeah. for you? Absolutely. Um, remarketing uh, by GDN is really powerful. We do that quite a bit. And it's just a great way to follow your clients around and get kind of annoyed them. Now, I, I kind of uh, I do have to leave um, pretty soon. So we're going to wrap wrap up this interview. Yeah. But guys, this is pre- pretty insane stuff. Like this is some incredibly powerful stuff. Ozer, where can people find out more about uh, how to learn how to use Google Ads Editor and how to scale their Google Ads? So we've got a course on, uh, uh, shall I send you the link? And then I'll, what I'll do is for your- Yeah, for sure. Your I think we can also. send a link to your video training. That Like I really like that training that you have. Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you, and then you can uh, put it on the screen or something. Yeah. So guys, go go. There'll be a link to uh, Uzair's video training, like where he kind of shows you even more of what he does inside Google Ads Editor. Now, for those of you running YouTube ads and spending money, and you want to like kind of improve your efficiency and be profitable faster, this is really important. Like Google Ads Editor is one of those things that, you know, once you get past that like kind of level of just figuring out the basics of Google Ads and you're trying to get into advanced Google Ads, Google Ads Editor is a must, right? Like if you're spending $100 a day, yeah, that's fine. You don't need to use Google Ads Editor. You know, you can, it will be better if you do, but it's not a necessity. However, if you are an advanced agency, right? If you're trying to run client accounts, if you have five or 10 clients, or if you're spending uh, higher amounts of ad spend, if you're trying to scale your ad account, this is just going to make your life easier. It's going to make your workflow so much more efficient. So you can basically get better results in less time. And that's really powerful. Now, uh, another question I had for you there is, you know, I'm, I'm like super impressed. Like you're a very, very advanced marketer, right? Uh, what kind of made you decide to join the links YouTube ads course, right? Cause I'm like, I'm learning stuff from you. Right. So for me, it's, it's a, it's a big compliment when you kind of join a course. Like no, mine. no, uh, I look, you never stop learning. Right, no matter how much you know. And I'm a big believer in it. I join lots of courses, but then I, I I take into account what others are doing and not just go from one course to the other, which many people do. They'll join up, they'll spend money, and then they'll move on to the next shiny object. And I absolutely love joining um, your calls each week. I have a group discussion and what you are teaching is up is unbelievable as well. Um, I'm not just saying this because I'm on this call with you in front of you, Sash, but I absolutely 100% uh, believe that you you are teaching, what you are teaching, especially with video ads is is the best out there. And I'm glad that I joined and I I learned a lot as well. So it's always, you know, it you you learn something new every day. You never stop learning. So I appreciate what you've done for yourself and build up your community on YouTube. You upload really good quality content. And that's how I came across your name. I saw, ah, oh, this looks pretty cool. And let me find it out. And then I hopped onto the, uh, the call and signed up. Awesome. That's uh, that's really cool to hear. It's, uh, it's always a great, great, like kind of compliment when, when an ex, another expert marketer likes your stuff. So I appreciate that. So was there, thanks once again for jumping on this call, uh, guys, make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the like button, go check out Uzair's training. And yeah, if you guys are interested in the YouTube ads course as well, I'll have a link below to that, but yeah, everybody, this was uh, this great call and yeah, cheers.